guys, so I'm here today to talk about romance fiction. I know, a little bit outside of the box for my channel, at least it feels outside of the box for me. It's not a genre I have ever specifically addressed in a video, I don't think. Uh, unless I have perhaps in the past said I don't like it, because I wouldn't be surprised if I'd said something like that. Which brings me to my first point, which is do I dislike romance fiction? And I've been thinking about this a lot recently. I think when people ask you if there's a genre you don't like and you're someone like me who reads very widely, it can be easy to fall into the trap of just saying a genre that you think you don't like even though you don't necessarily know enough about it or haven't read enough in it or don't always realise that books you have read would fit into that genre do, so you just say you don't like it. And I think I've definitely done that for romance. I also think I've perhaps done it for other genres, although I wouldn't be surprised if romance was the worst offender for me because I think that also is in part to do with the stigma attached to romance fiction. From my perspective, as an onlooker, as a consumer of, of literature, something I feel I see is a lot of dismissal of romance fiction. Um, it goes alongside perhaps some of the chiclet dismissal as well. There's, there's definitely a dismissal of female-led literature and literature written by women that appears to deal with female topics or topics of interest to women, which is often where romance is is plopped, is put. I mean, there shouldn't be a dismissal of that fiction either, but it shouldn't, romance shouldn't always necessarily be punked in that group. Um, so yeah, I guess it all comes down a little bit to sexism, but what are you going to do? I can say that about a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I definitely think, and I'm, sh I'm sure some of you agree with me because I had some interesting responses on Twitter when I talked about this recently, um, that there is a slight snobbery surrounding uh, romance fiction, as there is with many genres, and there is a kind of... Um, it's easy to fall into the trap on looking down of romance fiction, seeing it as a very narrow genre, which I think has been my issue. I think I have perceived romance fiction to be a lot narrower than it actually is and just a simple sort of exclusion from it from the literary canon which isn't even true because some classics are romance but generally speaking I think th th it's almost like you need to defend a book that's a rom that has a romance plotline by insisting that there's also more to it when relationships deserve attention and why shouldn't happy relationships deserve attention too? Obviously there's also the traps that some romance fiction falls into in which it completely ticks all the stereotypical boxes. Um, it can be like, the main the mainstream romance genre can be very heteronormative. Um, it can quite easily, you know, fall into the traps of uh, man saves woman, uh, woman is portrayed in a very stereotypical way and there are definitely romance tropes I do not like. But, as I've realised recently, there's actually quite a few romance books I like. There are quite a few books I have really enjoyed that actually, you know what, don't just have like a side romance, the romance is pivotal to that plot, it plays a massive part and it's as important as perhaps any other aspect of that novel, so say a favourite fantasy book of mine could actually be described as a favourite romance book of mine because the romance element is as important as the magic element. And that's something I'm coming to realise, and it's not just within the fantasy genre. There are actually quite a few books that I like that are romance books, um, and where romance is central to, to, the, to the novel. So I thought I would just share with you some of the romance books that I have realised are romance books that I really enjoy, and perhaps help break down a little bit of that stigma, or just encourage you to read outside of your box, and not necessarily to go and read more romance fiction, because not everyone wants to read about relationships, and that's also absolutely fine. But to just think about what I've realised about romance fiction, for me, you might be doing to another genre, and you might be sidelining it, when actually there could be lots in there that is for you if you just find your niche. So like I mentioned, fantasy romance is definitely one of my niches, as I have discovered. And I think that's helped in large part by the fact that I very much got back into fantasy of late. I was a massive fantasy reader as a child and a teenager, um, and I didn't read as much of it for a little while. I still read it, but it wasn't the main genre I was reading, and I've been reading a lot, lot, lot more of it recently, and I've been reading, uh, and I've been reading a lot of fantasy written by women, which 
One is harder to find. The classic fantasy books are often written by men. They're often sidelined, unfortunately, and female-driven fantasy in which I found really positive depictions of relationships between men and women and hopefully more positive relationship depictions between more women women. I'm still looking for more fantasy with uh, queer women in it um, and I've been trying a few recently um, and equally I've, I've read some good fantasy with some good um, male male relationships in them although what I'm thinking of at the top of my head is Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderlings series which I wouldn't necessarily describe it as a romance because that does feel like a subplot or at least because it's a multiple perspective story it doesn't take up that much of the narrative so I don't want to like mislead you and think it's more fun romance than it is um, but one of my favourite series as I've talked about a million times recently so I wouldn't talk about it too much here is the Seven Water series by Juliette Marilli I'm on the third book of this series at the moment it's an adult fantasy series it's intricately beautifully written world buildings, gorgeous imagery, gorgeous plays with folklore and fairy tale, uh, the images of medieval Ireland and the forests and nature, um, it has the fae and fairies in there and each of these books also has a romance at its centre. It isn't the sole concern of the book in that what I enjoy about these books is that the female main characters are so very independent. They're not solely motivated by their romantic relationships and there's other stuff going on in their life and they have goals and personalities but they still have romance and they still have love and the development of that love with a man in each of these books cases is still a massive part of their life and it impacts their story. So these are definitely romances. So I really like the Seven Water series which begins with Daughter of the Forest. I also more recently have just read a duology of fantasy books beginning with The Heart of the Fae which is also somewhat inspired by Irish kind of fairy folklore. It's a high fantasy novel as well where the fae is at the centre and it's also Beauty and the Beast retelling. So it is because our modern understanding of the Beauty and the Beast fairy tale is usually romance, a romance. And there is drama going on in the world of the fairies. Our main character Sorka is trying to cure her people of a plague. But her relationship is a big part of the story. It is a tumultuous relationship, it's not always a perfect relationship, but it is a relationship of respect. I still think it's a really positively represented romance that kind of develops as the two books go on and that you become invested in and enjoy reading about. So that's another book series that I've enjoyed recently that has a romance at its centre. There's books like Ash by Melinda Lowe which is also a fairy tale retelling, it's a retelling of Cinderella and this one actually has a romance between two women at its centre and it's just lovely to see a retelling of Cinderella that's a queer retelling. It's also fantasy and there's also fairies so we can clearly tell what kind of genre I'm enjoying at the moment. Romance, fantasy, fairies. Yeah. But that's not actually all the romance I like because I really like Jane Austen and Jane Austen's, you know, romance. They might be classics, they might be well written, but doesn't preclude them from being romances. And I have read three of Jane Austen's books, Mansfield Park, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion and adored them all. I find Jane Austen's writing so absorbing, it takes me away from the world into this like period setting, it just feels like I've, I've left modern day behind. <laughs> and the characters are fun and complex and get up to mad antics and kind of stumble their way through into finding themselves and, and their partners as the books go on. So I've really enjoyed all the Jane Austen I have read actually and I'm really looking forward to reading the other three novels that she wrote. And all the ones I've read are quite different relationships as well and they develop under very different circumstances so you get like a vast array of relationships although obviously they are restricted by the sort of gender expectations of the 1800s I still think there's something very like timeless about these books. Last year I also read a book called Sophia Can Is Not Obliged which is based on Bridget Jones's diary and through that Pride and Prejudice because Bridget, Bridget Jones's diary is based on Pride and Prejudice. So we've already got you know hints of romance right there and what is really nice about this book is that our central character is a Muslim woman she works in publishing and she uh, has been sort of commissioned to write a book about Muslim dating and so she is dipping her feet back into 
the world of dating, looking for somebody that can share her religious values. Um, and she was previously engaged but broke off that engagement, so it's been a while. And it is such a fun, like, funny book, but there's also some real emotional, heart-wrenching moments in there, so it's like a good balance of things. And I think if you like Bridget Jones, then you will very much like this book, but even if you haven't gotten around to trying Bridget Jones or have been a little bit fearful of Bridget Jones, I would definitely recommend checking out Sophia Can Is Not Obliged. Some slightly more obscure books that can I call romances? I'm gonna, they have romance in them, um, include Stone Gods by Jeanette Winterson. This is a science fiction novel in three parts, so each part follows a sort of different future in the life of humanity, its existence on different planets, etc, etc. And in each one there is a, is a love story at the centre of each of these three stories. There is phenomenal world building, interesting commentary on humanity and the earth and our future um, and our culture, but also love stories at the heart of it throughout time and queer love stories, so again, really wonderful. Then there's the whole other end of the spectrum where it's so explicit and it's not just a romance novel, it's um, about sex and sexuality and that side of romance um, is Nama's Kiss by Jacqueline Carey and I know Jacqueline Carey has also written another series beginning with Kushal's Dart, is that what it's called? And they're set in the same universe or world. This is a high fantasy novel following our character Nama who is a young mixed race girl who's been raised by her mother in, a, in according to her mother's way of life and she's reached a certain age now um, and she's lived quite a secluded life because they sort of live in the forest. Um, but she wants to go and learn more about her father and her mother is very encouraging, happy for her to go and do that so she sets off on a journey to find her father but also to find herself and um, she's been through these sort of uh, rituals to do with her culture and her people so she's trying to see where she fits amongst that as well and her role in society and she has various different relationships both with men and women throughout this book and there are most certainly sex scenes in there um, but they are incredibly positively portrayed, consensual sex scenes and there's still a plot throughout the book, there's still like a really intriguing fantasy plot um, but with that added element which, you know, I suppose it's surprising that you don't see more given that sex is a big part of lots of people's lives. I feel like I see negative depictions of sex so much more frequently in literature so actually it's really nice to read some books with positive depictions of sex. But those were some of the books that came to mind when I was thinking about this recently and I realised stop saying you don't like romance, Jean, because you do like a romance. You might not necessarily be into contemporary matchmaking romances where the protagonist's sole focus is finding a husband, but that's that's because I'm not actually that into contemporary literature that much. And so I don't even think it's the romance side of things that's putting me off there. I'm just being told that that's what romance fiction is. So I just thought it would be nice to say that even though I consider myself somebody that's very open about what they read, that's very open to reading anything and does not like book snobbery, I have fallen into this trap. I have let myself say I don't like romance fiction because people have deemed it not literary enough and I have thought they must be right, but I have realised that I was wrong and they were wrong and that I can like romance and like everything else and that romance can be a part of other genres as well. Rarely does a book fit into one genre alone. So I just thought it'd be fun to talk about this topic. I've obviously recommended a few books. I'm sure I could probably do an actual top 10 romance book recommendations video if that's something you're interested in. I wanted this video to be more of a discussion. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments below both on your thoughts on romance in fiction but also just generally have you reacted a similar way to other genres? What's your experience in this sort of like murky world of literary snobbery? Um, what are your feelings on romance? Um, have you developed a taste for it over the years? Is there a specific type of romance novels that you enjoy, say like fantasy? And what are your favourite romance novels, particularly fantasy? Do let me know. <laughs> I would love to hear from you and just have like a bit of a chat. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video, a bit of a random one, but yeah, just felt like sitting down and chatting about this with you. Until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.